Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Change Your Game with GTD podcast. Uh, my name is Robert Peake. I'm here with Todd Brown. Hello, everyone. And once again, the purpose of this podcast series is to kind of um, elucidate some of the principles of getting things done, the GTD methodology. The reason you'd want to know more about that is that it can help you get more done with less stress, have more work-life balance, um, be more productive, yes, but also be more in a state of relaxed focus, giving appropriate attention to the stuff in your world that deserves your attention. So we've been doing this for a while, and one of the fun things that happens is people write in, uh, they send us an email and say, hey, would you cover this topic, or I've been thinking about that, or um, these kinds of things. And we had a couple of these come in. Recently, uh, Dino wrote in and said, can you talk a little bit about the use of separate systems for your life and, and for your work, so personal and professional kind of thing. Um, we thought that was an interesting topic and one that certainly comes up a lot. Uh, in our coaching and seminars and this kind of thing, so we thought we'd um, we'd address that a little bit. Todd, what's your what's your experience of using uh, a combined system or separate systems over the years? I mean, we've both been doing this for quite a while through different contexts, different jobs, different life circumstances. Um, has your thinking changed on this over time? Um. I don't think my th my thinking has changed fundamentally. I, th I think ultimately uh, my goal for me and for anybody that I work with is that you find yourself in a situation where, <clears throat> um, as it were, as things are making their way into your system, that can happen in the most friction-free ways possible. And as you're using your system to be reminded about things, that that can happen in the most friction-free ways possible. Now, if I've got an integrated system, that is, I have uh, you know, all of my personal and professional reminders in the same place. The advantage of that then, of course, is that I only have one system to interact with, right? So if I'm, if I'm capturing, it's all going to the same place. And if, I'm, uh, and, if I'm, you know, and if I'm looking at my lists, as it were, I'm looking at a single system. Um, you know, if, if somebody does not have a strong feeling and they say, hey, yeah, I don't mind. Should I do separate systems? Work and work and home, or shall I do an integrated system? Uh, my my default response is start with an integrated system and see how that works for you. Um, and that's not because I'm particularly a fan of you know uh, of saying yeah you should be looking at your work lists all the time. That's not the point. But it's just that um, again my my goal is kind of friction free operation. I want to um, I want to be able to you know be as productive as I can be uh, with the, um, you know, without having to swap between systems. If I've got d dual systems, let me just talk briefly about, about a risk. If I've got two systems, uh, you know, and I find, hey, I've got five minutes free before my next meeting. Uh, if I don't, because I'm at the office, let's say, if I don't look at my personal reminder lists in those five minutes, it could very well be that I miss the chance to do something, which would have been a good choice in those five minutes. I've got the right, you know, I've got the right amount of time. I'm in the right context, whatever it is. You know, I, I need to make a, a phone call to book a, you know, to book a haircut or something. Um, so that 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 is a risk if you have multiple systems. It also means, of course, the systems need to be kept in sync, which for you know certain people that's uh, you know that can be uh, uh, that can be a little bit uh, more work than they'd like. Um, but at the same time, I also understand that there is for a lot of people a mindset that says, "Look, I do not want my work reminders and my personal reminders in the same place. That just fundamentally feels wrong." And I get that. I, mean, I can absolutely understand that. And so if somebody says, uh, yeah, I absolutely, you know, it just really feels uh, strange, icky, unhelpful to be, uh, to be at home at the weekend and to be interacting with a system which has reminders of emails that I need to send at the office, let's say. Um, you know, if you feel very strongly, uh, then I'd say, yeah, that's, that's okay. Just be aware of what some of the limitations and the inefficiencies will be in a, in a setup like that. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? What's your experience, Ben? Well, I think that's, that's great. And I really like um, you talking about the friction, the friction factor and also pointing out um, sometimes it's a practical situation, right? Like you have a, a desktop at work or there's not remote access or, or, you know, it's just not, it's not done in that organization to put personal stuff in a, in a professional system. So there's just a practical reason you can't. 
And as you say, sometimes people want that sense of clear differentiation so that actually having separate systems is, is a choice. And to me, it comes down to context. A lot of it, a lot of this comes down to context. And, and so I liked what you were saying about how easy is, is it to get stuff in and out? And also how appropriate is it, you know, in terms of, in terms of when you're somewhere, you have a few minutes, you know, can you zo zoom in, you know, on the stuff that is actually, um, you know, appropriate to what you should be doing. You know, in the sci-fi movies, they always go, you know, enhance, enhance, enhance. <laughs> I think of that kind of thing, that kind of zoom. So to me, it's a, it's a lot, um, the, da the dance between frictionlessness and focus, right? It's between kind of those two, how easy is it? And of course, the easiest thing is just one big system with one big next action context. And how much can you then create appropriate focus, right? So if it is a choice, or even if it's not, how can you use those two systems to create appropriate focus and, and designations and make sure you have good communication between the two, which is just a simple matter of capture called, you know, I, I often um, have been in situations where I'll email my personal email from work just so I've captured something to be able to process later or vice versa. If I'm at home, I have an idea, I want to process that in a work context, just making sure they talk to each other basically across, across the divide, um, you being the one that actually makes that happen, of course. So yeah, I mean, I think people can get overly concerned about this. I've, uh, I currently have a one, one system approach, but for many years and in many different uh, work situations, I've had to, uh, sometimes by choice, uh, sometimes by necessity. Um, and again, I've just found if you're thinking at the meta level about, you know, how do I create appropriate focus? How do I get what I want, you know, when I want it in, in the right way? balanced with you know having 200 granular contexts and is, is just cumbersome to put stuff in and out of all those contexts and having them separated or even duplicated across systems is cumbersome as well so i think it's more of an art in my experience than a than a hard science where we say here's here's the rules about how to do it but the guiding principle i think is is that thing is that that friction versus focus you know where are you and how easy is it to use yeah, I, I love how you put that. I think that's um, that's a wonderful uh, lens to put on this. You know, how how able am I at any given moment to get in front of me reminders that are helpful to see in that moment, right? And that's uh, th that's quite an interesting question, and a question that you know I'm I'm reasonably regularly asking myself about my own system, right? Is it do I have you know to your point, do I have the right context? Do I have if, whether things are making their way into the system or whether I'm using the system to be reminded about things, can that happen in ways that feel like it's, it's flowing? Um, you know, that I'm, that I'm able ideally to be, to be operating at the speed of thought. And if that's happening, great. And if not, well, yeah, maybe I've got a, uh, an improvement opportunity. You know, another, another thing that, that occurs to me, it's a related topic is quite often in offices, um, in, in professional contexts, what I find is that People are required to use multiple systems, um, and that the the thought that's coming to mind there is that in quite a lot of uh, in quite a lot of um, uh, professional environments, people who have any sort of responsibilities around sales will use some sort of a client relationship management, you know, software. Um, cloud-based or other, uh, which is which is a shared system. It's used by the, you know, the whole sales organization so that they can forecast sales and they can, you know, update projected revenue and that sort of thing. Um, and for anybody who's involved in sales, those, those uh, elements, that, that system uh, is going to be separate uh, very, very likely from, as it were, the rest of their GTD system. <clears throat> in other words, you know, if I'm using if I'm using Salesforce or one of the other you know products in this in this space, um, Salesforce and, or whatever CRM is a is a great place to put uh, you know projects and and very likely next actions around sales activities, right? So I want to try to close this deal with this client for this product or this service. Um, that's a project that lives in my CRM. Um, I'm not going to want to duplicate that in my in my you know non-sales system because as soon as you start duplicating information, uh, you know in, in my experience that way that way lies madness simply because you're all of a sudden now you're trying to keep things in sync that's just inefficient over time it's it's very likely to break down um, 
So, so that's something that I, as I say, I see, I see quite a lot is that people are, uh, people are um, required really to have those kinds of multiple systems. And in, in that sort of situation, what I would say is just make sure that you're clear what goes where, right? So it's the, this back to this whole idea of um, back to this whole idea of clean edges in a system. Where are your sales related projects, as an example, and where are your um, you know your non sales related projects? Where would you look to find next actions in various contexts? And as long as you can sort of without much hesitation, respond to those questions. Yeah, okay, well, all of my next actions related to things that I need to do um, in posting to to Slack, let's say, or, or Microsoft Teams or whatever, those are over here in, in this list. As long as you've got that kind of clarity and that kind of uh, distinction in your system, I think you'll be okay. But again, as I say, um, sometimes it's not personal preference. Sometimes the fact that we've got to have multiple systems is imposed on us. By our organizations yeah absolutely and I think sales uh, CRMs are a great example uh, of that and another one that immediately comes to mind is um, any kind of ticket milestone tracking system so if you're doing technical support you know and you get a ticket to, to follow through to resolution or if you're actively developing software right and you're uh, you're parceling out tasks or on the receiving end of, of you know, having those tasks to do Normally, tasks and tickets and those kind of things, as you said, I think of at the project level, right? And that they're basically multi-step, usually not done in one sitting. And I think where a lot of those systems, one of the big potential failure points of just trying to use a system like that uh, is if you're not really clear about when those things are in a waiting for state, right? So you you. Um, aren't necessarily tracking that, oh, this has gone to QA or this has gone back to the customer or this is, you know, is this is in a, a, a state where uh, it's not in my court, but I need to track and follow up and, and deal with that. So generally with those kind of systems where it's a much more, um, you know, it's a work stream that's fairly defined in that way. And I find the same thing too with, with CRMs and, and, and sales stuff, right? It's called, you need to in particular have a really good way of tracking hey it's back it's back with the client but i need to follow up and um you know that kind of thing so yes as you said it comes down to clean edges some of that i can i find you can build into the system if you can do sort of a, a, a kanban style state you know it's in it's in progress or it's waiting for something or whatever uh, or likewise if you can keep notes in in salesforce but if not um generally what i do is think of those things as projects because they are multi-step and then I'll keep the waiting for's, I'll keep the actions, I'll keep whatever other components in my system, along with everything else, right, that's an action uh, or waiting for. And then you just need to know to, to go there as part of your essentially project list in the project stage of the, of the weekly review. So. Yeah, that's, I think what you suggested there is a really practical sort of halfway house, isn't it? It's sort of, well, um, my projects have to live in this shared repository of projects because those projects are of interest to the organization more generally. Um, but the next actions associated with those projects are going to sit, as it were, in my system, simply in the interest of making it as efficient and as, as friction-free, as we've been saying, as possible to interact with those and make sure as I'm making choices about what to focus on that I'm looking at complete inventories of possible actions in whatever context that I'm in. Um, that's a, um, that, uh, I think that's, that, that's well said. You know, the other thing that's coming to mind as we're talking about this is let's, let's imagine that we've got someone who says, look, take all that on board, uh, you know, completely understand what you've said about the, about the, you know, the sort of the, the minuses of having two separate systems, but I really want to have a separate system for my personal life. Um, what would we say to that person? Not not challenging the decision, you know. In, in in other words, encouraging them to say, "Okay, well, that's fine. Let's figure out how to make this best work for you." What kind of advice would we have for someone in that situation where they say, "Okay, well, I'm going to have you know my system at uh, at the office and whatever the you know and whatever the calendaring, email, you know, um, messaging technology and 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 uh, associated list managers are, but I want to have a separate system at home." What what would we tell someone about how do they think about how to set that system up? Would it be similar, same in terms of the software? I mean, what, what would you advise in a situation like that? That's a good question, you know, and I think um, 
I would start, I would start not with the tool, if you can, if you have usually with a personal system, you have a range of options for what, what tool you can use. But I'd start a little, a little higher up from that, looking at um, where do you consider the dividing lines to be on a very practical basis? You know, where do you find yourself during the day, during the week? And what kind of things do you want to have available to you as a result of that? Um, you know, almost everyone has a home context, which is different than a home category. We point out, right? It's not just home related stuff because home related stuff could show up on an, an errands list to do on your lunch hour at work. But a home context is I'm at home and I can only till the garden when I'm at home and I don't want to see a till the garden line item you know, when I go to, when I go to work and I'm in front of my computer. So thinking about context, not category, you know, of, of type of thing really comes down to where are you, what resources do you have available? And increasingly for me, you know, what resources or where am I also does include my headspace and sometimes includes my, my digital space. Like if I'm logged into a particular application, just, just that is a context for me more and more these days. Like, I want to knock out a bunch of stuff in Salesforce, so I, I would even have that as a context. Likewise, there may be contexts for you in your in your personal life, so you can look at those. Certainly, one a great one to have is agendas for important important people, partners, and family, and whatever. If you have regular contacts and you have uh, and you have you know stuff to go through them with that you don't just want to kind of leak into your social social life all the time, but you can you can kind of structure that a little bit. So I would start with, you know, where, where are you? What's real for you? Um, do you want to be able to run, run errands on your lunch hour? Do you want to be able to, you know, do stuff on your commute? Do you want to be able to make the odd phone call uh, and see that at work? Or is it really work time is hermetically sealed, you know, and it really is totally time bound about whether your work or your life, um, you know, shows up in a particular time window during your day. I don't know. What about you? What, what if, what have you found um, works works for you in terms of that whole question of do you you know do you erect a, a hard wall between personal and professional and and how do you deal with that and how would you relate to someone that really does want to have have that hard division and have those those two systems? Yeah, and and again, it does happen, right? It, it uh, I I run into it reasonably often out there in the world as we do the work. I think. Um, so, so if I take as a starting point that they have made the decision, they want to have separate systems, that they don't want to have their work reminders and their personal reminders uh, together. Um, I think that the first thing I would say is let's make sure that this is um, as, as simple as ever possible to navigate. So I'd be asking questions like, um, number one, uh, when, when we talk about having two separate systems, you can almost think about it in terms of the five phases. Does that mean that we're going to have two separate um, inboxes? Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're going to have two separate, uh, you know, it, I'm assuming that what they really mean when they say I want to have two, two separate systems is that I want to have lists which are in, you know, which, which are in two different places. In other words, reminder sets that are in two separate places, one personal, one professional. Um, I think your point, and, and sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll see that their thinking will change if you bring up the point that, hey, um, you can create the same sort of effect if you have contexts, which are clearly only things you would look at when you were in your personal life, right? Um, sometimes that'll help and they'll, and in, in the sense that it'll help them to get to the point where they realize, actually, no, it's not so much two systems. It's that I've got sort of clean edges in my context list. Um, but, you know, all that aside, if they say, no, 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 two systems is the way that I want to go, um, so some things that I've recommended for folks in the past. One thing is um, have the same uh, have the same software, right? So if I've got a system in, um, you know, if I've got a system that I'm using at work, uh, use the same software at home. What that means is that all of the you know all of the nuances around interacting with that bit of software uh, applies in both places. That means I'm probably more efficient with it when I'm working with both systems, right? So that's one. That's one thing that I'll quite often um, recommend. Something else, uh, people will sometimes say, look, the number of things that I think that I want to be reminded about when I'm, as it were, not at work, feels like a pretty small number. 
and it doesn't feel like it's you know it's something that needs the kind of complexity that that uh, my work system needs. Um, and so in situations like that, I can quite often get them uh, playing with the idea of just using something, you know, let's, let's go with, uh, with 4,000 year old technology and let's use paper, right? Let's just, let's just uh, choose something that they, um, you know, that they can use, which is really flexible, really easy to interact with, requires no technical skills, batteries don't go flat, right? All of the, all of the advantages of paper. So, um, that quite often, you know, you'll, you'll see a light bulb go on for folks in that instance. And then I guess the, um, the other thing that I've seen happen quite often is that people will say, uh, look, I'm, you know, let's, let's imagine they've got a, a desktop computer, a laptop, or, you know, some sort of a work machine. Um, and they'll say, actually, what, what feels uh, helpful and appropriate for me is that when I'm in a personal context, I'd like to have my system uh, visible on my mobile device, right? So they'll they'll just build something which will live only on their on their smartphone, right? Um, and that could be, I think, again, you know, for people who have um, people live with their phones anyway. Their phones are always available to them. Uh, quite often, people will decide that, hey, that's that's actually the way that I want to go. So that's that's a quick, I think, highlight reel of the kinds of situations I've run into with people who feel pretty strongly that they want to have, they want to have uh, diverse systems, separated systems. That's great. Yeah. And thanks, thanks for making the point about everything from paper to mobile devices, because I think it is, it is important to point out there are a lot of options. Um, and I love the idea of, of reminding people of the five phases, right? That you're going to have to do all five of these phases across across these two systems, you know, to, to some extent in order to have a fully functioning system. So how are you going to refle reflect? How are you going to engage? How are you going to capture? It's not just about the context. So thanks. That's a, that's another great, great point. So I think we're sort of coming, coming to the end of our typical timing here. Um, if you were to have just a kind of, uh, I guess, top, top tip um, or pit, pitfall to avoid things you've seen people do wrong that you may may want to suggest people do right when it comes to having two systems would you have just just a kind of a, a top tip or takeaway as we're wrapping up here yeah i think um uh i think a couple things come to mind one is um fo follow your instincts okay if, if we've done our jobs as as coaches and trainers and people who are kind of transmitting transmitting messages about how gtd works and how it can be helpful then Hopefully, you've gotten a good sense of the trade-offs between, you know, integrated systems and, and separate systems. Um, but once we, assuming that we've done that, then go with your instincts. Um, you know, don't don't um, it implement something simply because we said you should. You should ideally, you know, buy into whatever approach you're you're, you're going to follow. And then the other thing I think is is just be ready over time. And this goes whether you've got an integrated system or a or a, a dual system. Uh, be ready to reevaluate and rethink, and and it may be that in the future, you know, as you were saying, Robert, it may be that in the future you'll go from a you know a divided system to an integrated system, or vice versa. Um, I think one of the interesting things for me in my you know 15 years or so of doing this is is how much um, how much these questions are evergreen and how the how helpful it can be to go back to the basics and say, hey, where is my system? Where are my lists? Do I have the right context? You know, it, can I interact with all of this in a, in a, in a, you know, roughly the speed of thought? And if the answer of that is to, to all of that is, is yes, great. If not, then maybe I need to do a bit more thinking about, about refinements. So how about you? That's great. That's great. Yeah, no, I really, um, in particular, think the, the opportunity for refinement is key. So I would say, you know, as a, as a kind of a main tip or a main guiding principle, start simple, start simple. And as you say, you know, go, go with what your instincts are kind of a first, a first pass at a system. And for me, knowing how to refine the system comes down to a very practical thing of noticing, notice when you don't have the thing you need, where you want it, when you want it, notice when you don't have, Brilliant. Uh, you know, what you need in the appropriate context and make sure you capture that. It's as simple as send yourself an email. Hey, I need an errand context. Hey, I need this. Hey, I need that. So if you're caught out on a train, you can't make the adjustment to the system in the moment. I need a I need an at commute or an at train list, whatever it is. So notice when you're when you don't have what you need to hand when you, in these divided systems approach. 
um, and and get that captured and get that changed. So that's to me that's the mechanism of refinement. And so I would say start simple, notice where it breaks down, let that happen once, right? That that you missed you missed uh, an opportunity once to have a, to make use of a five ten minute window of time, um, and and evolve from there. Evolve from there. Great stuff. Well, thank you, Todd, for um, another, um, as always, fun conversation. Again, the purpose of this is is to help you and to um, you know to shed some light on uh, what it means to practice the getting things done methodology, what it looks like on a practical basis. You know, so please do send in your thoughts, questions. We love hearing from you too. So. Uh, info at next-action.eu, info at next-action.eu. Um, love to hear from you. Hope, meanwhile, I hope this was useful and um, helpful. And hope you'll tune in and, and join us next time. Bye for now.